Happy Tuesday, everybody, and thank you for joining us for today's Two on Your Side Town Hall. I'm Michael Wooten. Hi, Michael Wooten. Happy Tuesday <laughs> back at you. <laughs> I'm Mary Ellis Demler. You know, we always welcome and encourage your questions and comments and the number to get involved and do that. You can just text us to 849 2200. Now later we're going to talk with an expert about race relations in Western New York and we look in depth at the impact on supermarkets from the COVID-19 pandemic. First up though for us today, we want to talk about one of the biggest issues out there amid this ongoing pandemic and that is this question of whether or not schools are going to open this fall. The state has not yet decided if students will return in person and if so, under what conditions? So everybody's wondering, will schools return this fall? Some local school districts put up surveys on their websites to get input from teachers, faculty, staff and others. Now we must point out the results are not scientific because it was not a random sample. But get this, more than 25,000 Western New Yorkers responded and there's pretty overwhelming support among those surveyed to get students back into classrooms. Well, let's discuss that right now with Michael Cornell. He is superintendent of Hamburg schools and he is the incoming president of the Erie and Niagara County School Superintendents Association. Wow, what a year to take that on, Mr. Cornell. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. Good to be with you both. Superintendent Cornell, let me start uh, with a question about those survey results, and we will show some of this to our viewers right now. Uh, people were asked what they think of this statement. I believe in person school should resume as normal in September with some new procedures to reduce the spread of illness. So we can see only about 20% of people who responded disagreed with that. 68% of people said they agreed that in person school should resume your reaction to that. And what else is in this survey that we should know about? Well, that was that was a notable result for us. I mean, we all have an intuition and a feeling that being in school in person on campus is developmentally best and appropriate for, for students. So it wasn't surprising to us necessarily that so many people thought uh, that that would be, you know, preferable over some other way of returning to school. Uh, we did have 25,000 responses, as you said. It wasn't scientific, but it was certainly enough that, so that it gave us a, a helpful snapshot of how people feel about what school should lo look like in September. And people generally thought that uh, every day uh, full attendance would be better than some type of a hybrid model or uh, returning to something that was uh, fully virtual. Uh, so it was held not scientific, but certainly uh, a helpful snapshot for us to consider. Well, give us some insight about what schools are doing right now. I mean, it's up in the air. How do you plan for in-person classes or virtual classes or maybe a combination? That really has to be a challenge. Well, there's a few things to keep in mind. First, we have about 70 days between today and September the 8th, which is the Tuesday after Labor Day, which is when uh, most students would return to school. Um, the name of the game is really risk assessment and risk management to student staff and their families no matter how we start in September. Um, thirdly, it's important to remember that the governor, the Department of Health, the New York State Department of Education, they have a difficult task. They've got to develop guidance for a state that's large and diverse, uh, and they have to do that based on the science and the data. And we have to be patient while they do that. And here in Western New York as superintendents, we're trying to make sure that we undertake processes in district so that we're ready when that guidance comes out. We know that that guidance will be based on the science and the data and people can rest assured that school superintendents will also be guided by the science and the data. Yeah, you mentioned 70 days. It seems uh, so far off and then it also seems like it's right around the corner when you're planning for all of this. Uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics, you may have seen, made some headlines yesterday. Want to get your reaction to this and we're showing our viewers right now uh, one of myriad articles that's been published about this. This is from U.S. News and World Report. It says pediatric group calls for children to return to schools despite coronavirus. So the Academy kind of balancing uh, the upside and the downside of in-person schooling and now advocating that kids should be back in class. Uh, do you personally agree with that? And how do you balance that risk and reward? Well, it really is a balance, Michael. We have to balance. I mean, there are legitimate concerns regarding the consequences of children not being on campus for school. You know, there's the, the, you know, the concerns around loss of learning, 
Uh, we know that school is the most regularly accessible source of mental and emotional support for many children. We know that school is an important solution for food insecurity for many families. We know that schools, for example, are an important source of initial detection for child abuse and neglect. So there are a lot of reasons why groups like the American Association for Pediatrics would advocate for having schools be on campus. On the other side, we have to balance the safety of our students, the safety of our staff, and the safety of families who could come in contact with somebody who has uh, come in contact with the virus at school and bring it home. So as a school superintendent, I, I think we all feel the same way. You know, we have to balance the two. And importantly, the state will be informed by the data and by the science. And, you know, if we've learned anything from uh, the way the state has conducted its business, they have been very data focused. So we can rest assured that uh, the guidance that they develop and pass on to us will be best on the best science available at the time that they deliver that guidance to us. And speaking of balance, part of your job as a superintendent is to consider all your constituencies, parents, teachers, uh, students. How do you address those parents or teachers who might say, no way am I returning to the classroom until there is a vaccine for the virus? What are their options? Well, we'll have to wait and see what the guidance says first, because there are a lot of things we'll have to unravel in terms of whether or not there's choice in, in that um, you know, the choice there. We, we won't know until we see the guidance to know if there's a choice and then we'll figure out how to deal with it. And there's also 70 days between now and then. I know summer in Western New York goes by like the blink of an eye, mm -hmm. but people's perceptions may change over the course of the next 70 days. So uh, we need to be patient. We need to wait to see what the guidance says. We need to, um, you know, work in district to accommodate that guidance. And then we'll start to answer some of those particular questions um, like that when we get later into the summer. Well, we certainly want to keep in touch with you uh, as that plays out. Michael Cornell, not only superintendent of Hamburg schools, but really talking to us here as the incoming president of the Erie and Niagara counties school superintendents association. Congratulations on the new gig and thanks so much uh, for giving us some of your time. Good to be with you both. Thanks very much. Thanks. Well, let's turn to the travel restrictions here in New York State. Folks coming from states with high infection rates must self quarantine for 14 days once arriving here in New York or in New Jersey or Connecticut. And today, quite a few more states were added to this list. Yeah, this now impacts folks from California, Georgia, Iowa, Idaho, Louisiana, Mississippi, Nevada, Tennessee. That is, of course, in addition to places that were on this list earlier, like Florida, Texas and the Carolinas. They already faced this quarantine rule. With travel so difficult, many people are taking shorter road trips this summer. Yeah, and one popular destination that's only a couple of hours away is the Corning Museum of Glass, and it will reopen to the public tomorrow. And we're hearing today about some of the changes that they're doing to keep everybody safe. The museum is open, the shop is open, the cafe is open. We want people to really enjoy coming here. When you walk through the lobby, you'll get your temperature taken. You will meet Penguin Pierre, our safety guy, who will inform you of all of our safety requirements during your visit. You'll see lots of signage on the floor to tell you where to stand to maintain social distancing. And you'll see a lot of the things that you've already encountered in a grocery store or some other establishment that's been open for a few weeks. We have marked off the benches uh, to identify where people can sit, recognizing that people are going to be coming in family groups or in ones or twos. We've removed tables. We have outdoor dining. Everything is going to be grab and go uh, for the most part. In the shops, we've removed fixtures to create more circulation space. We've created spaces for people to wait in line. Well, staff will clean the museum throughout the day with a thorough sanitation overnight. They even removed some of the highly touchable exhibits. Yeah, probably a good idea. The biggest thing to keep in mind, though, here is that reservations are required if you want to tour that museum.